I was in a local hardware store and I came across this clip-on light, a little flashlight, and I was looking at it and thinking, you know, the Cobb array in it, the chip-on board LED array, might be useful as a ring light for a camera. Let's take a closer look at it and uh, I'll warn you in advance that this has flashing mode, so I'll turn it on sideways, then I'll press it again, it goes down to half brightness, and this is where it starts strobing and flashing, strobing and flashing, and then off. And unfortunately, it's the same thing that when you have these things that uh, you can't just turn it on and then after a while just turn it straight back off again. You, you have to click through the modes. If you press and hold the button, as often happens with these, I think it does, yes it does. It's got the the SOS mode, lovely. It's notable that it's got that little spring-loaded hasp, but it's quite clever. Uh, by making one leg of the hasp longer than the other, it means it by default wants to actually get to a sort of um, central position so it springs back closed. I wonder who came up with that idea. Very clever. You'd think also that you'd be able to just pop the lid off. Actually, I see a little thing here. I think that might be a little battery tab. But to change the battery, you need a screwdriver, which means that for many non-technical people, they'll just throw it in the bin, won't they? That's what happens. Because they can't be arsed changing the battery. Because it's complicated and involves screws. Inside, I'm expecting two, two or three twos. Could be wrong. But nice, it was rechargeable. Uh, there is a little packer, a little housing. We'll pull the whole thing out. Oh, it comes out as a solid module. I wonder if this is used in other products. Uh, there is, yeah, there's the two CR2032s. Two is this thing going to come out further? Uh, there's the two batteries that popped out. What if I just push? No, this thing isn't coming out. Is it physically clipped in? It does feel quite tightly clipped in. I'm trying to see if there's any obvious thing that's holding that in. It doesn't seem to twist out. I think it must just be clipped in. Let me grab it with a pair of pliers and use unreasonable force. Because that usually works. No, it does appear to be working, yes. Oh right, this is just a packer and there is the circuit board. Oh, that is tight against the end. Is it friction? Yes, it is. So, it is a combined uh, cob button. Oh right, okay, so that rules that out, doesn't it? It's. I thought this was going to be a separate cob. It's got the button built into the middle of it. And on the back, it's got the classic little chip, the little six pin chip and a resistor. What's the value of the resistor? The resistor is 5.1 ohm. That's probably going from uh, one connection to the battery. Is it going to the whole lot? I think it might be going to the whole lot. It looks as though it's going from the battery connection to the actual chip itself. I'll tell you what, I'll doodle down the schematic of this. One moment, please. There are some puzzling things about this design. One is the chunky, blocky sort of nature of this. Um, that doesn't really being used as a heat sink because if anything needed heat sink, it would be the negatives because the transistor not, it really is needing a heat sink. Um, but they've got this huge chunk of the positive uh, connection from the battery connection and then the LED connection going through here. And it's worth mentioning there are six LEDs in the back that will just be one parallel circuit. So there'll be an inner and an outer track and they could theoretically have taken this uh, LED switching pin in and then they could have taken this uh, switch pin much further in because this, there's a switch behind here that's common to this uh, pad here. And it would have just got rid of this track. It's kind of strange. I don't know if they've just butchered it from another design. Things worthy of note, there is a capacitor between the battery connections. That's a little ceramic capacitor that will run the battery flat when it fails because some of these sort of highish capacity ceramic capacitors tend to fail in a sort of resistive state. There's a 5.1 ohm resistor, but instead of being... Like, say, for instance, here, feeding the LEDs from that pad, it's feeding the whole circuit. Um, which is strange, because that means that when the LEDs are lit, particularly when they're flashing, the voltage across the chip is going to be yo-yoing up and down as the voltage drop across this lifts that negative rail. A bit odd. Um, the blocky design is strange. Don't, don't know why they've done it that in such a strange stepped way. Um, makes me wonder if it was even a circuit board design package they did it on. But anyway, let's take a look at the schematic for this. And I've drawn it as the actual chip. So I'll zoom down this a little bit. A little bit more. We've got the two CR2032 cells here. A bit of trivia. 
if I bring in these uh, calipers and I put them across the outside of the cell, the CR2032 means 20 millimeters diameter by 3.2 millimeters thick. So there's your 19.9, well, 20 millimeters ish diameter, and there is your 3.2 millimeter on the button. That's how thick it is. The capacitors across that battery and then goes straight to the chip for the positive and then via the LEDs to the switched LED connector, which is uh, pin four. All three of the other pins on the other side, which are presumed to go into one transistor, uh, one, two, three, they're just connected on the other side of this resistor to the negative rail. And that also, that side of the resistor also feeds the switch, which is why when current flows through this, the voltage in this chip is actually going to waver up and down because there'll be a voltage drop across this. And the case of uh, fresh batteries and the LEDs being in parallel, giving a typical voltage about three volts, it could go from six volts, it could end up dropping about three volts across that, although there will be a certain impedance thing going on with the these lithium cells can't supply huge amounts of current, but it depends on the quality of them. But it's an interesting circuit. So what is the mysterious SOT23-6512? I, I typed that into Google. I did not find anything. But this is not a surprise. There are lots of mystery chips that just have random numbers and are clones of other chips. But there we have it. It's a useful enough little light, just not what I was hoping in terms of the uh, being able to be used as a ring light because it is all integrated onto one circuit board, which is reasonable enough. Oh, it's also got the little clicky switch, tactile switch, which is commonly used in uh, car remote controls. So if your car remote control switch fails, and they do, they just stop responding to presses, you could always, uh, if you have one of these knocking about, salvage the switch out of it, or buy packs them on eBay. They're dirt cheap. But there we have it. Interesting, worth taking apart, and uh, fairly novel design.